<laughs> cool. Having made his appearance at Blues Fest, around about uh, his debut appearance at Blues Fest, I should say, over tw two decades ago, John Butler joins us again here in 2022 with a seven album back catalogue to, to draw upon. It's great to have you back. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks. It's good to be back. Yeah, it's yeah. actually good to be here. Yeah, exactly. After what's been happening in the last um, couple of years, that's for sure. Yeah. So yeah. cast your mind back two decades ago when it was called the East Coast Blues and Roots Festival. Yeah. I've read that one of your original performances that you did on that day was to a you know, fairly small crowd. Obviously, your career wasn't at the point it is now. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, lots of people started uh, appearing to yeah, come and join you in the great music that you're presenting. What are your initial memories of of that uh, uh, debut performance? It's actually you? one of like the more formative moments kind of in my life and definitely my musical life. I we finally got to play East Coast Blues Festival, uh, which was huge, like, you know, and it's still huge. Um, but it was massive at that time to be, like, to get the, on the bill. We just got a little bit of radio airplay for a song called Pick Apart uh, on, on Triple J, which was massive. And we played our first gig on, I don't know, probably Friday. And it was about to a quarter full a uh, quarter full stage. I don't even know what stage it was. And I remember saying to my wife, next gig, this is gonna, we're going to fill this tent. You know, I've always had that kind of like, <laughs> we're going to climb the mountain. And um, next night we, we were playing. It was going pretty good. It was, about, it was about a quarter to half full. And we we're about a quarter into the set. We we're really just starting to kind of the engine was getting warm and we were starting, we were kind of hitting this peak and then this rain, this, this just massive rain just bucketed and everybody just ran into our tent. And we went from this like quarter, half full tent to a tent that was bursting and overflowing. But the only thing was, it was like they brought a whole bunch of flammable like gas with them. And we were like this match, like, like, you know, we were just starting to get going and so when they when we hit the whole thing just exploded and the whole gig just went clunk and it ended up being just like one of these like one of those kind of spiritual kind of moments where you feel like the applause still that night was the biggest applause I've ever heard because it went into uncharted territory I've, I've played to larger crowds and had larger applauses but that applause is like a tattooed into my brain. And um, the mixture of that night and that performance with Mother Nature on my side uh, with, with Triple J was like this perfect storm. And from there we just had, it's like we conquered the East Coast almost in the night, you know. Um, and coming from WA, that's a huge thing because that's all you really want to do is oppress everybody on the East Coast. <laughs> So yeah, that's my first memory and that's the one that still sticks, you know? Yeah, it's a great memory and it's a great to sort of talk about those formative years and so forth and how your career's gone on from there. And I guess the other thing with regards to your career since that time is, you know, the fluidity of the lineup and the way that you've been able to bring different musicians in and change the di dynamic. And so talk us through that side of things in terms of what you as a musician gather from your fellow musicians that have always formed part of the John Butler Trio. Um, oh, you know, for me, it's it's a real double-edged sword, you know? I Everybody I play with, I want to play with forever, you know? Like, I fall in love, and... But relationships have their own kind of... Their own trajectory that I'm not always in control of, you know? Some people want to go off and do their own thing. Sometimes I want to go off and do my own thing, and, um... But everyone who's ever been in the band leaves like their fingerprint in the band, you know. And, you know, Gavin Shoesmith was double bass. I was never interested in double bass, and he brought into the band, and from then on, had to have double bass, you know. And then, uh, and then, you know, playing with, you know, Nicky Bamba, you know, it just to have like serious funk and like reggae chops and. That dynam dynam dynamicism um, was essential, you know, after that point. Jason McGann's musicality as a multi-instrumentalist, 
and how he applied his talent to my songs, like, you know, it's, it's second to none, you know. Uh, Byron Luders bringing synth bass in. Like, now I, I love synth bass, you know. Um, you know, uh, Grant Garethy, you know, he, he has this thing called 60-40. Some drummers play with 60% up here and 40 down here. Some people with 60 down here and 40 up here. He's 60-40, and, like, that's huge, you know. So they all leave this, this, this imprint, you know. Michael Barker, Shannon Burchill, like they all, all these fantastic players, Andrew Fry, they, you know, Tara Pye, OJ, Alana, like all of them have, I feel always very blessed to play with. And I, they're far better musicians than I am, you know. Uh, and I feel really honored to have that time with them. It's always like, um, but it's always like heart wrenching for me as well like saying goodbye to people and watching them go or having to leave and not even knowing why just like this song doesn't this song wants to be with somebody else and i i as the servant to the song the butler i'm the butler to the song and like i i just have to give the song what it wants and it's it's not really always up to me you know if i'm doing my job properly i the song will feel at home with somebody and and um so no one's ever uh, expendable Everybody's always appreciated, and things are beautiful and complex, you know? Yeah. You mentioned just there about the synth sound, and I guess that was something that we started to hear for the first time on the last album, Home. You sound like you're very comfortable with that. Are we likely oh, to hear yeah. that on I mean, future oh. releases? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm recording my own album at the moment by myself, or mostly by myself, and yeah, I just mainly play synth bass at the moment. <laughs> I fucking love it. I think it's the best thing in the world, yeah. Yeah, and it's added a different dynamic to your music. I guess you were always the traditionalist blues and roots artist sort of thing. And I think, like this festival, it's, it's evolved from that, hasn't it? It's not... Yeah, uh, I mean, you know. I never saw myself as a traditionalist because I I never played real blues, you know? I never played 12 bar or anything like that. And when I did start playing slide and all those things, I guess that's considered blues, but I always kind of understood it more as roots music, the fact that everything from bluegrass to jazz to field hollering to blues country it's all in there and but you know you can hear all that in the rolling stones you know you can hear all that in you know a thousand and one hip-hop songs that have been or that are looping r b that are you know, they're taken from roots i think roots is it's probably a really lazy way of saying where i'm from but it's the most eclectic and the most broad to choose from because I feel like you know it all spawns from the roots and it because of that it's extremely versatile and it it's it's not really interested in or I'm not really interested in staying in the box you know like once I've kind of done something and I my mind wants to try some other stuff it doesn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater but it it definitely is like oh shit that's that synth over there is really dope with that banjo pattern and that banjo and oh how about we put some trap hi-hat with that banjo bit and that's like that you know that, that all makes sense to me that to me goes oh yeah that's comfortable it doesn't seem like fusion or an idea as much as like that's what music's always done the other thing i guess that's been constant throughout your career is your strong social conscience which has morphed its way into a lot of the lyrics on on the songs and i guess we've heard slightly less of that in the last couple of years going with more traditional sort of stories of love and relationships and so forth. What are the things that, you know, sort of resonating with you on that social conscious uh, issues wise at the moment? Oh God. I mean, how long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're living in a really interest, interesting time, you know. The metaphor to me is like, if you lived with a meth addict who was completely trash in the house and stealing everything, and destroying the home, you'd have to tie him up and have an intervention. And it feels like that's where we're at with our leaders in the corporate capture of our state and federal governments. They are completely captured by corporations. They, and I feel they answer to corporations more than they answer to the people. I feel there's a real attitude in like, you know, at least the two party upper echelon politics, which is like, they know better than the people. It's this real condescending, patronizing way they, they speak to us. And I don't mean like how they're speaking to us here. I kind of mean like, you know, you always, you can always 
you don't watch what somebody says, you watch what they do, you know? And so they can say this, but when they do that, to me, I'm just going, yeah, you don't give a shit about what I'm saying. And so you care about climate change, you care about people, and you care about jobs, but you'll do nothing to create new jobs into the future when there's no fossil fuel, because that's where we're going to go, whether they like it or not, because the economy's already going that way. But in the meantime, they're going to, like, they're going to open as much as they can for their mates, whether it's fracking in the NT, or off the coast of Western Australia with the Scarborough Project, or, you know, mow all the last of the old ghosts down at the Tarkine, or a million and one different inventions that are having Adani. It's like, they're really just trying to kind of milk the last of it, but it's an extremely reckless and, um, like it's it's an ill it's an illness <laughs> you know when somebody's really addicted to something and they start ripping off the people they love the most and hurting their own communities that's an illness and it feels like there's a real illness in our politics nowadays where they know they say believe in the science get vaccinated uh but we don't want to believe in the science about the climate change it's like they talk shit and so i think people can smell that and the bummer about it is that people are starting not to believe in democracy. And if you look at the course of history, things are, in many ways, through democracy, have gotten better. You know, you know there's, <laughs> there's less deaths due, through the violence. There's all kinds of, you know, there's all, things have gotten better, but um, we need to still stay on top of our leaders and, and, and this beautiful thing that we call democracy. And at the moment, I think what we're having is a complete corporate capture of our democracy. So rather than like burning it all down, it's like, no, just just chase the pirates out of town and let this hard work and, and these and these structures that we have evolve. I don't, you know, I, people say down with the system. It's like, there's systems everywhere. Yeah. There's ecosystems. I want to see them thrive. This, you know, it's nice to like, flush your toilet and, and Watch it go away from you, <laughs> you know, rather than build up in your backyard. There's all kinds of great systems. You know, the medical system's awesome. I don't want to down with the system. I'm not into that. I just want to get the pirates out who don't seem to give a fuck about us. So that was way too long of an answer, but you asked a big question. I did, I did. <laughs> you know, and at the end of the day, it's like, you can only write so many songs about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, because this issue is a human issue, and if, we have to be able to reach each other beyond the flags, beyond the colors, beyond the creeds, beyond the religions, beyond the, the, the political parties, and reach each other. And I think that's why love songs or, or storytelling songs last the test of time. You can say, save the Tarkine this, you know, this week, but in two decades, it's gonna be something else. So like, how do you kind of distill it down to something else? And that's why, you know, once you write a song, about something, about the man screwing, screwing the average man. Like, there's only so many times you can do that before you turn into a parody of yourself. Yep, the I, end. Yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah, music, music and musicians like yourself, yeah, have, definitely have a, you know, a, a, a unique opportunity to sort of spread that message. You know, yeah, in, in, in whatever way, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, whatever way. I, it's, don't think it's about telling people they're wrong anymore. But, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to put into words, man. It's, yeah, I, I find, I find yeah. it, uh, it's a really interesting subject, you know? I don't really like soapboxing and anything like, or anything like that. And at the same time, it's like, yeah, something needs to happen and it needs to change. But if you want to get as many people on side as possible, you, the first thing you got to do is not to shame them for being different than you, you know? They might have, they might have a really great solution that's completely out of your, like, bubble you're out of your echo chamber so listen you know tradition listen a little bit and maybe together we'll be able to sort this out rather than like i'm right i'm woke and you're wrong i, don't, I just don't feel I, feel I don't feel that's the answer you know well you have your guitar in hand can we tempt you into playing a little tune for us yeah with this great uh great amount of rhythm and melody yeah, having them behind me it's very <laughs> I don't know, uh, I might just do some picking for you. How about yeah, that? Okay. Yeah. 